<laughs> as much as people think oh, by myself I can do this, you may achieve those things. Yeah. But with the team, you have different people's uh, perceptions on things, mm. different people's opinions on things. You own a business in the city? Come to the way show. No time a big really? Come to the way show. You got a message for the people? Come to the way show. You could be black, white, red, blue? Come to the way show. It's all love, we want to meet you. Come to the way show. Come to the way show. Come to the way show. Welcome back to our viewers. And, you know, we want to do a shout out to those of you guys first time tuning in. But today we're going to introduce our special guest to you guys. Your name? So this is Kato. And I'm going to show you guys everything I'm all about. Okay. So you guys hear that? So, uh, you know, we're, we're going to dive into a lot. So I suggest you guys get your pen and papers out because we're going to drop our one or two nuggets. And hopefully you guys get some takeaways from this. So, Kato, I got to ask you, where are you repping right now? Oh, man. It's a hard question because, look. I was raised on Orton Park. Yeah. Everything my boat and everything that created me really started around Victoria Park. Victoria Park. But then I went back to my mom's house. She moved like my mom moved every year. You know what I mean? So I gotta ask you, what was it about Victoria Park that shaped or molded oh, you know man. all that whole learning experience? My house got raided at Parkwoods, and then we went to Kennedy. Like it's just so much nonsense, you know. Mm -hmm. But that's basically what showed me, like what made me understand. What's important, what's not important. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And how would you pick between like what's important and what's not important? Well, it's more like when I was a kid, I thought like there there was a point where I thought money was everything. Mm. But then I started to understand that it's not like there's things you can do in, in the time being that are not going to take you where you want to be. Facts. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like my girl's pregnant right now. So everything I want for my future is not what I'm do what I was doing at that time. Mm. It was not doing anything for me. It was like like I went to jail, you know what I mean? I had yeah. to do all sorts of dumb in that time being, but it didn't take me anywhere. Nothing I did. Like I made a lot of money. I was making like seven hundred dollars a day and it wasn't taking me anywhere. Right. Like so, we spend that money and it's gone. So but why do you feel like it wasn't taking you anywhere? Was it because like the foundation, the blueprint? What was it about that moment? I don't know. Like, at the time I was 19, everybody I was with was younger than me. Mm. But it's more so, like, we didn't understand, like, okay, we have money right now, but how are we going to use that when we get older, you know? Okay. So, that it, it, like, that futuristic thinking. Yeah. Like, we didn't have that. Was, we're living in the right now. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, we're all living in the right now. This oh, is so okay. sick right now. Let's go buy this right now. Oh. And I started taking it. I was like, "Yo, nah," <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, that's, that's like buy things that you can use yeah. for later. Like, stop that. But we would spend, we would spend too much money a day. And I started taking in like this is too much money. You know, mm. that's too much money you spend in one day. It makes no sense. So when was it when you said, "Okay, yo, forget it, yo"? What was it that happened at the yo. final moment that said, "Forget it, I'm done with it. We're changing how we're, we're doing." Things. Something happened. Yeah. And I was in place for all of it. Mm. It was my fault for all. Like basically, I'm taking the blame for everything. Right, and I didn't go nowhere from it. I, everything I had just started going down. Mm. So everything we worked for, oh, let's go do this, let's go do that. Everything I worked there just started going down, and I was like, "Yo, this is pointless." Everything I just did was pointless, you know. So I had to take in, like, I need to make a career, okay, so that I can move on for my future. So when you say career, I know music is a part of your thing, right? But here's what I want to ask you: mm -hmm. when it comes down to music. What genre was it that kickstarted music for you? That one genre. Yo, it's so confusing because R and B, like two mm. thousands and nineties R and B, is what speaks to me. But then when I make music, it's completely different. So I don't even, I can't even understand that myself. Right. I'm still trying to understand that myself because I don't even know where my inspiration comes from when I'm listening to old R and B. You know what I mean? Okay, because that was that's what I kind of wanted to lead into. Like, like where did the passion come from? Mm hmm. It's old R&B, but I still don't understand it myself. At what pinnacle moment was it that you knew music is what you wanted to go into? Like, I've been doing music since I was a kid. Like, in the beginning, I did, like, piano lessons or whatever. Interesting, yeah. I took a drum, drumming lesson. Well, but even looking at that, piano and drums. I was just, like, so born into music, basically, but without anybody ah. else in my family being put into it. I was it's just, like, like, I guess my parents seen I was good at it from a young age, you know? Mm. So they just kept putting me into it. But you see, that's why, you know, they always say, like, wherever you see your child is going, you encourage that direction. Right? I agree with that. And even when I it comes down that. to music, like, when you look at um, piano, right, mm -hmm. the different chords and strings that it pulls on, right? Um, through, through piano, what would you say from piano, what you learned from piano 
you use that you've brought to your music now. What are some Honestly, different things? I was like three, I was like three, four years old. Like they took people at like six, but because I was so advanced at that age, they put me in it so fast. So like I was at Ontario <laughs> Conservatory of Music, whatever Victoria Park. Yeah. You know? When I hit a note on a piano, I hear it from my ear. Mm. So if I'm gonna say something back, I can mimic it, and then it it kind of works for me because. When you play something by ear, it's a little bit different than when somebody actually can read music. I can't read music for nothing, you know? Interesting. So when I play music, like, I can figure out a song by hitting each button until I get there. Like, each key, whatever, until I get there. But I can't read music for nothing. So it kind of helped me in that that aspect. So that that's interesting because on paper, looking at the notes, no comprende, right? Yeah, no, I can't But when they that. come down to listening for that acute yeah. sound, your ears can gravitate to, okay, yeah. what chord was that? Was that a baritone or was that more on the lower end, mm -hmm. right? And even that, I don't even understand those words. See what I mean? That's interesting. I don't understand <laughs> those words. I just say, ah, you know that, what I mean? I can that's mimic the, about the sound, but that's it. But that's the thing about music, right? Music is not so much uh, uh, a study of like reading books. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's a feeling. It's a vibration. For sure. Right? So in your music, what's the type of feeling or vibration that you're trying to communicate to your audience? Depends on how I'm feeling at the time. Yeah. You know? It depends on how I'm feeling yeah. at the time and how, what I'm trying to put out. Because it depends how I'm trying to put something out or what I'm trying to put out at the time. So let's talk about what you're putting on right now. Right? Do you now, have anything you're working on right now? So yo, I basically have been building up all this music around a certain genre. I don't even know what to name the genre. Yeah. It's just like all this heartbroken music <laughs> that I have been putting out. You know? I was with the shorty for like seven years and then everything went to garbage. So I put all that music out right before that happened and then mm. all of a sudden it started to like correlate with the yeah. what I'm feeling and everything that's going on. So that's kinda how it came together and I've just been putting that out. Once that's out, then I feel like I can move on. Because mm. like I said, I'm very versatile. So this is just like a little pocket for me. It's not where I'm going to stay. Right. You know what I mean? That makes sense. So at what moment when you were playing your music, when did you see that, that reaction from people? Right? When you, you laid a track and it was like, yo, Kano, this can play. Must have been like the first one I made out of all these songs that I've been making lately. Mm. Can't even. But it was either lie or heartbreak. One of them, like when I'm in the studio, it's like a lot of people come to me and tell me certain things, mm -hmm. but sometimes I don't listen. There's there's a certain time where everybody was telling me the same thing at once, and I started to realize like, damn, mm -hmm. I can't just ignore. It. I have to listen to what everybody's saying to me. Everybody around me is saying the same thing. I was like, I have to. I can't ignore it. So that's when I decided to put all these songs together and just come out with it. So. Going back to your career, at what what song was it that you you know for you that that you said, all right, I'm gonna take it a little bit more serious now. Uh, probably the first song I made was "Done Up." The what what song is that? It's the one I made like I think it's 2016, 2015. I made it. It was the first studio I ever went to because mm. I used to do it on Audacity in my kitchen, whole setup or like record on the phone and then get the beat and all yeah. this. And we went. We made my first song and then it. It kind of, it, it, it like semi blew up, like halfway there. So here's what I want to ask you. For those of, for viewers that are listening and are for our new viewers just tuning in, mm -hmm. when it comes down to making a song, right, what are some some nuggets, what are some tactics, like what goes behind the pen whip? That's the thing every time I make a song, every time I build on a song, mm. I pick the beat first, which probably might be the other way around for people. It's like, I, I pick the beat first. Mm -hmm. Then in my brain thinks about the chorus. If I can't make a chorus or a hook, whatever you want to call it, mm. off that one beat, then I'm not I'm not doing it at all. Mm. I need a melody on the chorus, on this whole beat before I can do anything. Then I'll build my verse because a verse is like, just to me it's filler. You know what I mean? Like sometimes it can be something really good, but to me it's just filler. So the chorus is the main thing. Everybody gets engaged with the chorus, the hook then the the verse comes in so that's basically how i build the song i'll hum a melody first i'll just hum it gibberish i'll speak gibberish into the mic and then i'll build words onto it afterwards mm. and that's how i make every song so if the beat is not good I'm, there's no song being made that day you know what i mean well going back to music being a feeling right you got to really feel the beat and mm -hmm. know that it, that you can hit certain but even going back to the piano right the skill of of listening to certain uh, chords and listening to music, right? The same thing with the beat selection, right? The same skill, 
that you that's learned true. how old. You know what I mean? That's true. How long ago? If a beat is trash, I know right off the bat. <laughs> right, right, <laughs> right, right, right. beat is garbage. <laughs> Doesn't make sense. But also, same thing with my vocals too. If my vocals are off, and I'm like. Scrap you know what I mean, it. throw it like it doesn't sound good at all. So, let me ask this then. So when when it comes down to making a song, mm-hmm. right? How long compared to before to now? How long does it take you to put the pen work behind it, get the beat down, the whole nine to create a song that you feel like okay, this is something that I can connect to, or or people can gravitate <laughs> to something like that. Okay, the thing is, when it comes to me, I'm very particular about certain things I make. Mm-hmm. When it's songs I like. Sometimes I don't even like it. Like it's so it's so hard. It's a it's a fifty fifty because the songs I make in twenty minutes that everybody loves. They're like, this is the best song you ever made. I'm like, I made that because I book studio first. Mm. I haven't even made anything yet. I'll book studio time. Interesting. I have nothing yet. So then I'll make a song over one two days. Then it's the day before studio, and he's like, okay, you're still coming. I'm like, yeah, I'm still coming. But in my head, I'm like, I have absolutely nothing to bring there. You know mm. what I mean? So I'm writing the last 20 minutes. I'm just writing random things, trying to make flows on any beat that I have in my archive, whatever. So there's there's some songs that I made in 20 minutes. There's some songs that I made like three days process. So the, the songs that are longer have more detail about my life and how I feel about things. Mm. And the songs that are made really quickly are like, people still relate to them somehow, but I just, it's just everything is in the back of my brain. I just throw it quickly. Because I'm like in a rush, you know. So how do you how do you write your lyrics? Are you the classic type of pen to paper, or are you in your phone typing away in your notes? It's fifty fifty. If my phone's dead, I'm writing on the paper. Sure. You know? So if my you, phone's up, I'll write on my phone. Do you find a difference between the two, or is it just it's just it's just whatever? It's giving me something to get it out on. Nah, there's not really a difference. The only thing is, okay, this is like a hack. Mm. I'm sure everybody a hack. When you look at your phone, it shows you every single letter in the alphabet. Mm. When you're reading off of a keyboard, right? Okay. I'll show you what I mean. So, yo, pay attention, yo. See, like this, it shows you, like, Q-W-E-R-T-Y. It goes on, goes on, tells you every single thing. Okay. So, if you're thinking a tray, then I look at way, ray, a, you know what I mean? I look at the letters to make the rhyme for the next thing. That's interesting. So, when I'm on my keyboard, it's easier for me to see the next rhyme. When I'm writing in pen and paper, it's like, I have to really sit there and sit down and think about it. That's actually a really interesting way to create music. <laughs> That's you know? how I make music. Yo, but again, your music is it's, it's such a tool where, where you can be so creative with it, right? You can put any spins on it. And yeah. You can come with any type of dynamic, yeah. right? So when it comes down to your music from when you started to now, how has your style kind of shifted through, through, this, through time? When I first started making music, my yeah. biggest influence was like 50 Cent. So everything I made was based around that. And, and how did it change from 50 going on with? No, it was more like, like I've been be- making music for a long time. Like I'm 23 now. Mm. I was like 15, 14 then. Even before then, I was in the kitchen with my brother with a little microphone in the kitchen. I asked for a microphone for Christmas, you know. Got a little microphone with me and my brother making stupid songs. They weren't good. So it's like, it's been a long time. You got to think 2015 to 2021. Mm-hmm. So like we're making music from time. So it, it took a lot. To move from there to there, it wasn't 50 influence anymore. It was more like my own influence and like I'm listening to myself and I'm like, that doesn't sound good anymore. Mm. So it just keeps progressing as it is. Kind of just depends on the person you are. Some people like my older stuff. Some people like my newer stuff. But at this point, my target audience is everybody. Because if mm. you don't like the song I made, you can like a different song That's I made. That's real. Because I can make every genre. Like- In the music field, right? What are some setbacks or some pitfalls that you've gone through to say, you know what? This is what it was, but I'm going to bounce back and come, times, come back 10 times stronger. It's like basically exactly what you're saying. You go through a certain genre. They don't like it. If you move off of that genre at all, mm-hmm. then you got all this disrespect from your fan base. Because mm-hmm. your fan base wants to hear a certain thing. Say you're into like hard rap. Then you make Love Em On Song. Mm-hmm. So you, you're into hard rap. All of a sudden, you make this different song and they're like, what the hell is this? They switch up. You know, they're getting cheese at you. They're like, what the hell is this? So... It really depends on what genre you're in, unless you're gonna like branch out to everybody and you don't care. But that's the kind of feedback you get from people who don't want to be in that category. Mm. So it really depends on what genre you're trying to hit and what what's your target audience. But but that's the part of being real with your audience, right? Yeah. And also remember, when you're making music, you're almost of service to people, right? I've entertained you. 
I've done for you, appreciate what I've done, but here's where I'm going now. Yeah. Almost like that, right? And and that's a part of having an honest fan base. All right, so, Kato, here's what I want to ask you, right? Because when we look at the music industry, right? Mm -hmm. Going into that field, by default, you have to tap into the business side, right? What are some different business things you're looking at doing going into the music industry? So I'm looking more so at Spotify playlists. Mm. YouTube is a big thing because I know a lot about YouTube right now and everything I'm working with my team right now is basically focused on that mm. Spotify playlist YouTube revenue I'm trying to get everybody all the fan base engaged in what I'm doing so that I can make money off of those kind of things so if it's businesses like that it's, everything has to do with money so when we go <laughs> looking at the money what because the one thing when I look at the music industry is like we know artists get paid mm -hmm. <laughs> right but what are some of the different streams of income of how they get paid? We know one is touring, right? But what are some different examples you can give us? Well, the same thing I said, basically YouTube. People don't understand the amount of money that comes in from YouTube. Once mm. you've hit your threshold on YouTube, yeah. which is like a thousand subscribers and 4,000 watch hours, wow. you're making money. Spotify is a little different because immediately you're making money. Right. So it's just kind of how you market yourself on those two platforms. YouTube and Spotify are the biggest platforms to me. So even around the team, the team side of it, I know I'm, there's, a, there's an old proverb, African proverb, where you say, if you want to go fast, you know, go alone. If you want to go far, go with the team, right? How does that team aspect change, you know, you as an artist into where you're trying to go with your vision? How does the, the, the team aspect change that? How does it influence it? What impact does it have on it? The whole thing is I don't think anybody can go anywhere by themselves. Mm. to be dead honest straight <laughs> as much as people think oh, by myself i can do this you may achieve those things yeah but with the team you have different people's uh perceptions on things mm. different people's opinions on things so you're going further because they're giving you their opinion there it's a second thought so instead of you thinking yeah mm. i'm gonna make this song it's the best song in the world yeah you can have five different people's input telling you no it's not the best song in the world yeah. at all that's you know, real though. <laughs> just throw that song away and do the other one, you know? So you need other people's opinions on things sometimes. So by yourself, I don't know if it's going to go that far. There's different ways that you can put yourself out there. And when I say there's different ways, we look at signing a label, right? Going out as an independent artist, right? I'll be flat out. Most of the people that I talk to that are just coming in, like brand new, they have like no knowledge of that. If you are coming in with a team... If you're signing to a record label, I see those as two different things. Because mm -hmm. your team stands by you. You're basically one. You and your team are one. So every money you make, you're one. You break With the record label, they'll give you a, uh, a payment. So say I offer you $100,000, make this amount of money, make this amount of songs, all this stuff. They work you like a dog. Like They're, they're basically telling you, like, we gave you this money off front. Now you have to pay it back. Oh. They're making the money, but it goes right back to the people they owe it to. I watched the old documentaries like Jay-Z, like all those big time rappers mm -hmm. saying that they have zero dollars in their bank account. It's an old documentary. Mm -hmm. I, I don't even remember the name of it, but I know for a fact Jay-Z was on it talking about he had zero dollars in his bank account because he signed to a record label. They took all this money, gave it to him, and then he, he owed them. Mm -hmm. So you're always, you're always paying back to them. So it makes more sense to be an independent artist. Even if you're with a team, yeah. you're still an independent artist because you're not signed to a label who's spotting you the money. Interesting. So you don't actually owe somebody the money. Like say you put me on yeah. and I make all this money. Yeah, I'm going to pay you out of respect. Okay, this guy put me on. I'm going to give him the money, like some of the money I make. But if you're actually contract indebted to that person, it's a completely different story. Right. That's it's, why when I see independent it, artists look a little smarter than people who are signing record labels. It's, it's almost like they can tell you how much you should give us. Yeah. <laughs> right? Instead of you saying, you know, the kindness of my heart, maybe I'm going to give you this. Exactly. They're exactly. like, nah, we want a mill. <laughs> no, we give and you. Some. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. So when you see all these artists come on, they get signed and they'll give them money for their chains. They'll mm. give them money for the clothes. They'll give them money for flight. How do you think managers are a thing? A manager would be nothing without the artist. Mm. Yeah. But if a manager has come from a record label, the record label gets the manager to put you on. And they give you all this money mm -hmm. and tell you you owe us this money. They would be nothing without their artists. If you don't make this amount of songs to put on this album, if you don't release a certain amount of songs and make a certain amount of revenue, mm. by this time we're dropping you okay. from the label. Okay. And I've heard that before. So when you're an independent artist, you're kind of working on your own. Or even if you have a team, you guys are working on your own. 
Okay. Even if you have a, a select few around you, you're working on your own. Well, okay. Rather than somebody who's on a record label who literally is on crunch time. You, you sign a paper saying, like, I have to do this by this time because I owe you money. I'm indebted to you. All right. So, Kato, part of wrapping up today, I want to know if you could reach out to our viewers and get them, you know, a freestyle, get them something, you know, a little taste of what's coming up in, in the future. Yeah. Might not be a taste of the most immediate thing that's coming to my future, but it's a taste of something I can do, you know? All right. Let's run it. Put down my stresses, I'm sick of guessing who we impressing Tired of guessing, counting my lessons and learning lessons I've been up for four days, hit me in the worst way Pain just like a 12 gauge, yeah, so it's got that range Different place, same thing, can't keep myself sane That's why I got this man See, look back when I was rocking fake leather, it's whatever. Music fit me better than my favorite sweater. Set up my rhymes, that's waves you can't ride. Try to throw it in the past, but it comes in with the ties. Ah. And then my mind takes over. Roll up the good, good, and pour the liquor on my shoulder. I was only 17, but rolling on 22s. The daily is what I do. Don't run so I don't scuff my. Shoes. And call me crazy, call me loco But if you eat stitching, the rolling with me is a no-no And now I'm always on my dolo On my solo, why I'm sipping from a solo cup So double up, what's in your double cup? Best in my league gang, call me the next runner-up And I ain't f with no feds, I eat bacon for breakfast Trying to pin me for possession cause I came off aggressive I ain't f with no feds, I eat bacon for breakfast Trying to pin me for possession yeah. You guys heard it here live, the Wave Show. Let's go. I want to appreciate you and thank you for coming out, showing some love on the Wave Show. <laughs> right? That's what it is right now. You guys, our viewers, thank you guys for tapping in. Um, for our new viewers, hope you guys took a lot away. Um, for our, our, our viewers from before, you guys know what it is. Next episode, we're coming back. And we'll see you guys. Come to the wake show. Come to the wake.